and welcome back to my channel as I play with my oldest, one of his little twisty toy things. Like, it's like a Rubik's Cube thing, but different. It's like you can make all kinds of designs with it. I don't know. I'm bored. So, welcome back to my channel unless you are new here, at which point, just welcome. My name is Rusty, and this is the chat where I talk about my favorite movies, mostly horror, and my favorite music, mostly metal, and we are going to continue with the Rambo Festival. My love, my joy, my darling, my baby boy, John J. Rambo. His hair is even longer in this movie. We are going to talk about Rambo 3. This is from the Sylvester Stallone Rambo 5 film collection. I think this is the newest one Lionsgate released. Yeah, it's well, I know it's the newest one that Lionsgate released uh, with all five films to replace their old masters with the four film collection. Um, it was released in 1988. It was written, directed by Peter McDonald. It was written again by David Morrell and Sylvester Stallone. It stars Sylvester Stallone, Richard Crenna. That man stayed, never mind, he, he, he's like Sean Connery. I mean, even though he was like, the older he got, he still stayed like really nice looking, is what I'm saying. And Mark DeJong. So, yes. Now, a lot of people get confused about this movie, you know, because once again, the movie takes a turn. And, um, yes, there's a mission involved, but it's a entirely different kind of mission and entirely different atmosphere so the franchise takes another turn once again though very fluid very natural turn which works out well and it's uh three years later of course and um rambo has become a complete hippie his hair is even longer which i think looks stunning um colonel troutman is you know on a diplomatic trip and is coming down and uh, we see Rambo is now fighting in fight clubs you know he's doing stick fighting and uh, Troutman tracks him down actually watches the match follows him back to where he lives which is now he is a complete hippie in a Buddhist monastery right so he lives in a monastery. He does these fightings to ha and hands all the money over to the monks where he's helping construct their temples and doing monk-like hippie things that a hippie would do in <laughs> a, a monastery. Not much to do, I guess, but just build shit and meditate. Which, after all the shit he's been through, do you blame him? So... He tracks him down, he goes in, introduces him to a man named Briggs, and they start talking about Afghanistan. Um, and they want him to help recon a Russian commander in a... So once again, the Russians are the bad guys in here, but then again, aren't they always in real life as well? Um, so uh, there's a specific area of Afghanistan which is being brutally ruled by a Russian commander. And they want him to go, Troutman wants him to go with him to recon this guy. Now he's like, no thank you. I've served my time, I've served my war, I've got my pain. I'm perfectly fine here being a hippie monk, you know. So Troutman goes anyway after he refuses. He goes and is taken prisoner. And Brick comes back to the monastery where he informs Rambo, that um, his friend, his creator, has been taken hostage. And Rambo's like, well, not for long, because let's go. <laughs> I'm going to go in. You know, and he's like, well, you do know that if you go do this, America will take no responsibility for you. You're on your own. If you get caught, if you get killed or whatever, we have no idea that you exist. And his reaction to that is so poignant because it is so true. And that is, he's like, what else is new? You know, I'm used to that. You know, I'm a soldier. 
we're always forgotten after we're used. So, one of the things that people get confused about this movie is that, you know, they think of Afghanistan and they think of the Afghanistan war. They think of the Taliban and all that kind of stuff. This movie was set, this movie was filmed in this story and it's set before all of that. So, sometimes people will watch this movie and go, but I thought Afghanistan was bad. I thought it was terrorists. I thought it was Taliban and all of that. And I'm like, yeah, that's later though. This is from 1988. This is before all of that. And like, oh, okay, yeah. So keep that in mind when you watch this movie. The, Tal the Afghanistan isn't a bad place at this time. Um, it's being controlled and infiltrated, and uh, you know, fighting against Russia and stuff. Sort of like the. It is then in 1988 what Ukraine is today. So think of it that way. So this is before all of the terrorist stuff. So he goes um, and he meets his contact. He is taken in to the region where he is taken to a village uh, closest to this fort where this Russian commander rules with the iron fist. Um, what's his name? Mossad or something like that. Anyway, I don't really give a shit, to tell you the truth. I can't remember people I hate. But, um, so he, we see um, Tautman being tortured, questioned by this Russian uh, Zikow motherfucker. So he goes to go after him. He goes and he goes to this village, which is nearly, you know, which is the nearest place to that. He learns about the people. We get to see. We get introduced to that little boy. So he's got the we. The main character is like Rambo and his guide, and this little kid. Um, so he gets to know this little this little warrior kid, who I think he sees a lot of his self in, even though he's like four foot three. He's just like, you know, I think he sees the same rebel spirit in him that he has, you know the honor and everything that he has, I think he sees in this kid. So this kid wants to help and go, but, you know, no, we're not. And at first they're not going to help him. Um, but then when he says, well, I'm going to go do it by myself, they realize what a honorable man Rambo is. And they actually agree to assist a little bit, you know, in helping him get to this place. Now, that little, that little shit, the little boy, he, he sneaks along too, because it's just him and the guide's going to take him to him, you know, take him to the place. But the little boy sneaks along too, and he's a really cool little character. And um, he's, he actually holds his own for the most part. So he ends up infiltrating the fort. He does find uh, the colonel, uh, but the shit hits the, the shit hits the fan. The boom booms begin. Uh, the three do make it out. There's lots of cool, cool fighting scenes uh, in that first volley. So the three of them do make it out. The little boy gets shot in the leg. Uh, they do manage to make it back to the sewers because that's how they got in, was the sewer. And they do manage to get out. But of course, you know, that guy is coming. Now, he's already super pissed. Rambo's already super pissed because right before all of this occurred, that Russian had attacked that village and killed massive amounts of people, you know, in that village. Because that little spy asshole from where he met his guide, that, that gun place, that spy had went and told about this tourist named Rambo. But of course the colonel acted like he didn't know who he was talking about. But uh, So that's why he had went and attacked that village, because that's where the tourist had went. So, he is extremely angry now, <laughs> because he has been infiltrated and half his damn men killed in his little, in his little fort, and he's barely gotten out. So, um, this is where we see, like, that fucked up scene where, um, he had been shot, Rambo had been shot right through the thigh, uh, right through the thigh, right through the side, and it had, it was basically you know, this big long stick in there and he had to like push it out 
But that wasn't even the, the the coolest part. The coolest part was like when he opened up the the bullet and he put all the gunpowder, like not on it, but in it, and then lit it on fire and like flame shot out both sides of his side. That was a fucked up scene. And you're like, ouch, that must have hurt. Momentarily, anyway. Um, but so once he gets his like wound. It reminded me of that chick in Reve- uh, Revenge, the 2017 movie Revenge, where she had to, where she had to basically do the same thing that he does in this movie. There's a movie from 2017 called Revenge, where the girl is hurt like Rambo is hurt in this particular scene, and she too has to cauterize cut if she's got a big limb stuck through her almost in the exact same place that rambo has it in this one she has to do the same thing he did she has to pull it out and then she cauterizes it with a beer can that actually leaves the beer mark on her so that's that's what it reminded me of was that scene from revenge both of them in a cave same injury they have to cauterize their own wound. Very painful. Very brave. You know. But. So he ends up having to climb the cliff. Because he certainly can't get back in the way he did the first time. So he climbs the cliff. To get back into that fort. Where he does manage to, to start a whole bunch of mayhem again. Releases all the other hostages, uh, manages to hijack the copper, uh, chopper again, much a copter, much like he did in part two at the end. He, he was also in a copter. So he hijacks this copter and Petrovsky comes after him again, like the first one. There's a big boom fights and they go down, they land. Uh, we see a lot of cool kills in the cave, especially like, just like in the second one, Petrovsky had his main bulldog, you know, that big meathead-looking motherfucker that, that Rambo had to fight. This guy's got one, too. He's also got a big double cheeseburger meathead that's his main dog. And Rambo has to fight him, and that was a really cool scene because he had, like, a grenade on him. He, rat, you know, Rambo, he was nearly getting the shit beat out of him. And he wrapped that... Uh, rope around his neck and managed to pull the pin and when he did the guy was like oh shit and he kicked him he went and he fell so he's hanging there and boom in the sky it was really cool so there was a lots of really cool scenes so he uses a lot of his arrows you know his explosive arrows taking out i mean the death the death toll in this movie was huge you know huge a lot of quick kills, really good inventive kills. I liked it. <laughs> so, <laughs> a lot of good kills. I liked it. <laughs> so, taken out in various ways and various ugly deaths. Ways. Um, hang Russian big dog with grenade. Yeah, we just talked about that. Um, Rambo and the Colonel face the commander squad um, who comes at them with a copter with his copter again just like Petrovsky they, they love their copters obviously they can't get down and fight hand to hand they got to like do it from a from a super militaristic copper you know, a copper chopper you know so that's pretty funny uh, but right as he's about to take them out the whole fucking Afghani Horsemen, you know, it looks like fucking pantaloons coming out of nowhere, you know, and they come across the desert and there's this big gigantic boss fight showdown. Um, and the end scene, Rambo manages to hijack that tank, and so this tank is facing off against this uh, Russian commander's copter. And they end up like colliding. So the copter and the tank collide. And that guy dies. Rambo survives, of course. They all have a touching goodbye at the end. After this 
like I said, that that final act desert war scene was phenomenal. Just phenomenal war footage. Really scripted very well, choreographed very well. Lots of really sweet, ugly death. <laughs> I'm talking about that a little too much, aren't I? I'm watching Rambo, for God's sakes. What other kind of mood except venomous, murderous rebel are you going to be in after watching Rambo? Especially all five Rambos. You should watch them alone and let nobody else come around you for a week because you're going to be hyped up, ready to kick somebody's ass. That's just what happens when you watch Rambo. Especially if they do anything deserving an ass-kicking. So... They have this touching goodbye. He gives the little boy um, the necklace that he had taken from Ku. And um, that means, you know, for luck. And that was uh, that was cute. And then they drove off saying, I think we're getting soft. You know, they kind of make this joke between each other. Toutman, the colonel and him, kind of make uh, a joke that they think they're getting soft. Well, honey, if that's soft, I don't know what to tell you about hard. <laughs> you know, because they both kicked ass in this movie. And that's not going to say Richard Crenna was phenomenal in these three movies. Because he really held his on. And like in this movie, even in like outside daytime scenes, um, Richard Crenna was still very fit. He, you know, he, he was still attractive. He, he held his looks. Um, he was fit, and he kicked ass, you know, and I admire Richard Crenna for taking care of himself, because even at his age, he still looked remarkable, like like Sean Connery did for, you know, most of his life, even when he was 80 years old, you know, because he still kicked complete ass in that movie with Catherine, whatever her name is, you know, Michael Douglas's wife. Um where they were the thieves entrapment I knew it would come to me but Sean Connery was just gorgeous and entrapment and he was fucking what 77,000 years old uh, so some of them just age very well and Richard Crenna was one of those he still was tough he still was uh, attractive he still could hold his own weight in fight scenes it was, you know, I, I admire him for that. And Stallone, of course, was phenomenal. Once again, I don't know why people pick on Stallone's acting. I think it has something to do with, like, maybe the movies. I mean, if you give him a meathead role, or that's all that he can take, maybe he's going to come across as a meathead. But when he's got something juicy, like I See You, Copland, Cobra, and Rambo movies, when he's got, like, meat... When he's got a script and he's got like you know good stuff to to work with, I think fucking Stallone is a phenomenal actor. I don't give a fuck what anybody says, you know. Um, I think Arnold Schwarzenegger proved the same thing. You know, he he made movies like Maggie, and things where he had to be touching and emotional, and um, maybe he couldn't have done that at the beginning, you know, like in the Conan days, but he got to where he could. But I think Stallone always had it, you know, because you're talking about some of his first movies here. Uh, first Blood will ignore a party at Kitty and Studs. But, um, you know, his first movies, he had some very good emotional scenes. Those scenes in First Blood uh, where he had the breakdowns, I think they were phenomenal actor. I mean, you know, it was like Mel Meryl Streep going on there at the end of First Blood. And his emotional scenes and these, the way he could look at the camera, the way he could get across to you this wounded, um, betrayed, untrusting, but very honorable and decent person, because that's mostly who is betrayed. You know, honorable, decent, caring, sympathetic, empathic, Good people are the ones that are betrayed, are the ones that are used, are the ones that parasites seek out. Uh, that's just the way it is. 
So I think he is absolutely phenomenal in it. Rambo Tree is another 10 out of 10. The action sequences are absolutely phenomenal in this movie. He didn't have as much emotional stuff to work with as he did in the first two, but it still was enough to show his acting ability. And he, of course, kicked ever loving ass like Stallone is supposed to do. So that was Rambo Tree. The third installment. 82, 85, and then 88. Um, tell me what you thought about Rambo Tree. How did you feel the story progressed? How did you feel about you know him becoming a hippie monk <laughs> and then coming out to save his friend or his creator, as I call him? And um, yeah, what do you think about these three? Um, I will watch and script the next two and we'll finish it up sometime soon and yeah love you miss you bye bye always remember never forget you are the only one of you on this whole entire planet and dna proves it and um you should act like it you should be the only one of you don't be a penguin because you're not you're a very very special person always remember don't let anyone tell you different otherwise they are wrong and you can give them a sample of your dna to prove it Bye-bye.